hello. Hello. Hello, hello, and hello, and good morning to you. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. Now that I have pushed all of the correct buttons, this should be a live broadcast here on YouTube. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so many people here waiting. Sorry to keep you waiting. I pushed the wrong button. Hello, BB. Dishant, hello. Lali Lali, Monica, Agnes, Elena, Tefo, Mie, Nauko, Tammy. Da, 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 da. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Yes, it is hot and humid here in New York, too. Oh my God. I don't know what the temperature is, but the humidity is high. Yikes. Yikes. Hope you guys had a good weekend. Have you studied English this weekend? That's my question. Can anybody hear me? That's a question. It's muggy. Can you guys hear me okay? Hello, Fab. Welcome. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? Is the sound okay? I keep looking at the software. Mie, thank you. Q. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Ah. Yeah, it's too hot. Hello, Dishant from India. Welcome. We have the whole world here. We have Italy here. France is here. India here. Japan is here. Toronto is here. Where else do we have? Where else do we have? I know we have other places. Italy is here. Uh, Monica, sorry, I forgot my brain. Ari is here. Hi, Ari. Thanks for joining, everyone. Um, binge watching a lot of podcasts. I guess we would call that binge listening. Um... What's up? Are you over the moon or nervous? I'm not over the moon or nervous. Hey, thanks for the invitation. Why don't you do karate in case somebody attack you? Because I'm not a violent person. Um, I studied to be T B T talk T say. Hmm. Excellent. 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 I was cooking on my Japanese lessons uh, this week and this weekend especially and I did a lot of studying. My brain is uh, tired. Uh, I can't show you the dogs right now because they're downstairs. And I'm broadcasting on a computer. Sorry about that. Um, my dogs are smart and silly sometimes. The dog days of summer. That's what we call this. Yep. Very hot and humid days are the dog days of summer. That's for sure. Um, so here's my question. When I can't get my hands on something I want, I feel anxious. Good, I can't get my hands on that. Um, so here's my question. What did you study this weekend? An American show called Password. Like, Monica, that's an old show. <clears throat> When I'm really, ex are you up or humble? Hmm? I'm not sure what that means. When I'm really exhausted, I usually grab some beer for getting my second wind. That's right. That actually works. You know, my grandmother used to say, have a drink. It'll pep you up. <laughs> so if you're not feeling well, my grandmother used to say, hey, have a drink. And, and I don't mean a, a, a drink of water or juice. My grandmother used to like to drink scotch on the rocks. Um, password. I know there's an old... The password is booger. Ice cream. Nice. I studied English grammar. But Monica, here's my question to you. How do you know the TV show Password? Because that's from the 70s, I think. Um, your lesson today is be up to, and it means show off. Don't you know that I am better than you in English? Uh, be up to doesn't mean show off. Be up to has many meanings and uses. That's what we're going to study toge together. 
Uh, never mind. It's a cool show. Yeah, it is a cool show. It, that, uh, Password is a good show to, you know, make you think about vocabulary. So, hello, Mohammed. Thanks for coming today. Thank you, everyone, for joining me today. I appreciate that. Um, if you've just joined, I'm, I'm, I'm spending a couple of minutes, as I do every Monday, to find out what you studied over the weekend and looking for your example sentence. Grab a beer to get your second wind. I'm getting my first wind from coffee. I don't know why the lights are so bright today. Ay, ay, ay. That's better. Hello, JPS from France. <clears throat> I Google it and find it means somebody beat up is somebody who show off. Um, be up doesn't mean show off. <clears throat> what does get my second wind mean? I found it in Facebook and YouTube as well by chance. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's a great show. Monica, I saw, I'm sorry, I forgot. Where are you from? You, you've told me a hundred times, but I can't remember. Um, getting energy again. Right. Right. You know, after Czech Republic, that's right. That's right. That's right. After playing, um, after playing table tennis for two hours, you might be very tired, and then you take a break, you have some Pokari sweat or some other energy drink, and then you feel refreshed. When you feel refreshed in that situation, you can say, I got my second wind. We can learn from each other. I'm not the only person here that's going to help you learn. Everybody in this room can help you learn. Everybody watching here can help each other. That's good. That's good. Um, I studied some phrasal verbs and idioms like drone on about, he 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 he, get through to somebody, bang out, scratch your head. I was scratching my head all weekend trying to figure out Japanese writing. Be up oneself. Um, he's full of himself. That means he's. Um, what's the word you used? Uh, hang on, I'm just look. I'm just strolling through the com. Uh, somebody who's full of themselves, you could say, um, uh, he's. What is that word? I'm sorry. I'm trying to read things, and I, I can't remember. Show off. I don't know. Um, I can Google it now because we're in the middle of a lesson. Sorry. Uh, I learned we are where and where. Ah, same pronunciation. That's right. Where, where, where. We're ready. Where are you? We were. Uh, w e r e without the without the the second one is were. We were we were studying. Where are you? Um, the the middle one is different. The middle one is different, uh, Ari. So we apostrophe R E is we're or where. We're ready. We are ready is where. Just like where are you. But W E R E as in we were, the past of was, we were is different. I learned how to make tea with strawberry. Yeah, nice. Okay, so um, let's rock and roll, shall we? Let's rock and roll. Um, today is what? This is the last lesson of August. Um, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. I've been doing this for nine months. Can you believe that? Nine months every Monday here with you live on YouTube. Awesome. That's a lot of English lessons, and if you would like uh, to get the PDF for every one of these lessons, uh, you can easily download that. I'll show you how in a second. Um, here's a brief message. First of all, 
if you go to myhappyenglish.com slash YouTube, that's myhappyenglish.com slash YouTube. Hello, Agnes from Jakarta. Um, then uh, you can download this whole document that we're going to study today. Isn't that awesome? Um, also, well, while you're there, you can take my free vocabulary workshop. Um, I know many of you have done that. Do you find that useful? Have you found my vocabulary workshop useful? What do you think? Is that helpful? Um, that's a workshop uh, for about 30, 35 minutes where I teach you how you can get new words and where to find them, the best way to study them, and how to own that vocabulary. So um, that's all there for you at myhappyenglish.com. I hope that's helpful for you and also you can get a copy of this document which is what we study here every Monday be up <clears throat> be up be up um, it's really helpful thank you Nauko appreciate that um, appreciate the feedback there I'm thinking of doing another kind of similar workshop I have so many ideas in my head to help you speak English better. But today we're going to talk about be up. There are many things that you can use uh, to be in ways that we use be up. Very helpful. Mie, thank you. Elena, thank you. I liked your vocabulary workshop so much. I like blah, blah, blah so much. I like coffee so much. I like... YouTube live so much. Elena, be careful. Are you glad to see us? Yes. I'm very happy to see you. And many of you come here every Monday for nine months. I really, really appreciate that. I do. That's for sure. Ah, I like you guys so much. I like you so much. That's awesome. I like you so much. I like coffee so much. You've, you've got that fossil in your head. Sometimes when you say something incorrectly a million times, it just becomes a fossil and burned in your head. So that's, you know, that's important. I can't see you. That's correct. Of course, I love you guys. I love coffee very much. Me too. Too much. Uh, all right. We have a lot of things to talk about. Let's do it. Um, the first one is be up. Hang on a second. Hey, uh, Naoko, are you up? Are you up? Oh, you're sleeping? Sorry. Are you up? Are you up? So, up means awake. And this is a very conversational word. So, if you said, if you say, I was awake early this morning, that's okay. That's totally fine. We understand. But you could say, I was up early last night. Uh, I was up early this morning. I'm up early every morning. Or, last night, I was up late. I stayed up late. Stay up late means I was awake very late. Uh, my dogs are up at 6.20 in the morning, usually. 6.20, 6.30, something like that. Hello, Lucas. Welcome. Amazing to have you here. Thank you. Glad to have you. Glad to have everybody here. Thank you for joining me today. I appreciate you. That's correct. All right. So be up means to be awake. Here are some examples. Sorry for the scroll there. Uh, Jack asked Tommy if he was up. Hey, are you up? I'm up early every morning. That's me. When I was a teenager, I remember when I was a teenager, I used to be up all night. Up all night. That's a song. I'll bet Fab knows that song. Up all night. I forget who did that song. 
Um, so I'm up late every day because I'm a night owl. A night owl. So Mie says she's up late every day because she's a night owl. What's a night owl? Are you an early bird? Yes, that was my, BB, you, you read my mind. A night owl is a person who likes to stay up late. An early bird is a person who likes to wake up early. In the weekend, I often stay up at night, stay up at night. And uh, lolly, 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 on the weekend works better. On the weekend. So we have these two phrases. During the week means Monday to Friday. On the weekend means Saturday and Sunday. Or for some people, I know that in some countries, the weekend is Friday and Saturday. So on the weekend is the two days off, and during the week is the five days that you go to work. Often that's how it goes. Um, but we say during, uh, during the week on the weekend. I'm usually up at least until 1 a.m. at night. You are a night owl. I'm a morning person. Is your cat an early bird or a night owl? Good question. I don't have a cat. Now, Kosan, me too. Gotcha. I'm a night person. I'm not an early bird, but I'm a night owl. Yeah, I used to be a night owl. I used to be, and then uh, I got old. Early bird. Tweet, tweet, tweet. I'm up to watch Michael's YouTube live. Thank you. Right, on the weekend. By the way, in British English, they say at the weekend. But Americans find that funny to hear. What? At the weekend? You mean on the weekend? So. Um, what time are you usually up until at night? I'm usually up until 10. And when I'm lucky, I'm up until 930. Because <laughs> I need my sleep because I'm up early. Uh, over the weekend, so I work early on Saturday. I teach, um, I have four lessons on Saturday morning, New York time. And I'm up at 5.30 in the morning on Saturday. So Saturday, I'm up very early. And then um, Sunday, I'm usually up around 6.30. Um, at the weekend is the right version in British English, not in American English. Americans say on the weekend. British people say at the weekend. So choose your country's version of English as you like. There is no right or wrong when it comes to American or British English. Up. If I'm up later than 10, 30, or 11, I have a terrible day the next day. Not possible. I like to be, I like to have my head hit the pillow at 10 o'clock. The older I am, the sooner I'm up in the morning. Me too. I'm usually up till midnight later on the weekend. There you go, on the weekend. Thanks, Fab. On the weekend, on the weekend, on the weekend. Ah, uh, on the weekend. Um, what else did I want to ask you guys? I forgot. Um, I'm usually up until 11 during the week until 1.30 on the weekend. There's no, uh, there's no, um, uh, there's no way I could stay up until 1.30. Impossible. <laughs> British English is the mother of the English language. Um, so let me put it to you this way. Spanish in Spain and Spanish in Mexico is different, but they're both Spanish. Portuguese in Portugal and Portuguese in Brazil is different but they're both Portuguese. So British English and American English are different, just like Canadian English and Australian English, okay? I understand that everything came from British English, but American English is different. Go pick up a copy of um, phrasal verbs in use or um, vocabulary in use. You know those in use series? And you'll see um, 
you'll see totally different vocabulary than I use. So that's that. If you enjoy British English, that's good, but I don't teach British English. Sorry, because I was not born in Britain. I was born in New York, which is in the United States. Okay, up. Can I say over the weekend? Yes. What did you do over the weekend? Um, over the weekend. Yeah. On the weekend, over the weekend. What are you doing over the weekend, we say? Yeah. It is what it is. That's correct. All right. Next, when you are up for something, when you are up for blah, 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 it means you're in the mood to do that. I'm up for it. I'm up for it means, yes, I want to do that. Yes, I want to do that. I'm up for it. Of course, if you're not up for something, it means you're not in the mood. You don't want to do that. So I could say, for example, seems like Tommy wasn't up for Jack's phone call. Hmm. I wonder what the problem there is. Um, hey, listen, I talked to Joe today. He's up for going to the bar tonight after work. Are you up for going? Are you up for a game of tennis today? What are you up for today? You can also say I'm down for it. Coming soon. Coming soon. Coming soon. Correct. Da -da -da -da. Our superhero has telepathy. Are you up for a big meal at lunchtime? Um, not really. Sometimes. I'm up for, I'm up to go for a beer. Mm, let's go. How about you? Let's go. Anybody else want to have a beer? I'm up for watching your YouTube every Monday. Thank you, Mie. Right. I'm up for kissing my wife, but she rejects me. Ooh. Ouch. Sorry to hear that. Um, what else are you up for? Are you up for this lesson? Hmm? I hope you're up for this lesson. By the way, speaking of this lesson, if you've just joined us, um, would you like to download this PDF? You can do so. All you need to do is go to myhappyenglish.com slash YouTube and you put in your name and your email address and I will send you that and you will also get my weekly English letter newsletter which I send you English lessons in your email box. Cool. How cool is that? I'm up for your class. Thanks Fab. I'm up for this lesson of course. Da -da -da -da. Thank you. Thank you Naoko. Up for. Up for. And I'm up for British accent, but I'm afraid Michael gets angry. I, I, I don't get angry, as long as your questions are not pushy. <laughs> okay, you can also be down with or down for something. Now, I know that I told you that this lesson is about be up, but English is a very interesting language. American English. So, you can also be down with or down for something. For example, I talked to Joe today. He's down with going to the bar after work. What? I talked to Joe today. He's up for going to the bar after work. I talked with Joe today. He's down with going to the bar after work. We use both. We use both. But Michael, why is that? I don't know. Are you down for a game of tennis tomorrow? Are you up for it? Are you down for it? I'm down for it. I'm up for it. Um, so, using I'm down with that or I'm down for going to the bar, that's... Um, kind of uh, new English. Maybe in the last 15 or 20 years in American English, we use that. Uh, 
pushy means when somebody has something to say and then I respond and they keep trying to make their point even though we've already finished that topic. That's pushy. Check Google. Um, so, which one do I prefer? Oh, I don't know. Both. I can't say I'm up with correct. You've got a sharp eye, my friend. That's right. We don't say I'm up with that. I'm up for that. I'm up for, okay, but you can be down for or down with, but you can't say, I'm up with that. I'm up with that. Okay. Thanks, BB. So we use both. We use both. And I know that up and down are the opposite meaning, right? But there are a lot of cases that we use um, in conversational English. And I think we've talked about this before or here or in other classes. Um, I'm going up to the store. I'm going down to the store. Something like that. Um, and the meaning is the same. My daughter was up for w Wushu Championship this weekend. What's a Wushu Champion? I'm glad she was up for it. I'm down for skiing and hiking. Is it possible to do them both? I guess. You hike up the mountain and you ski down the mountain. I'm down with that. Um, up for, down with. Up for, down with. We use both. That's for sure. I know English is weird, right? English is very weird. All right. Let's talk about being up a creek. A creek. A creek is a very small river. Also called a stream. And a paddle is the stick that you use when you, you know, you move a canoe or you move a small boat, right? So, um, a paddle is also what you use when you play table tennis. I think it's called a paddle, right? Yeah. So, a creek is a small river and a paddle is the stick that you can use to move your boat. So, if you were on the river and you dropped the paddle in the water, ah, and you didn't have the paddle anymore, you would be kind of in trouble, right? Paddle is a kitchen utensil, yes. So if you are on the boat and you don't have the paddle anymore, you're in trouble. You are up a creek without a paddle. So when you are up a creek without a paddle, it means you're in trouble. You, you get stuck, right? You're in trouble. Um, so this is an idiom. The idiom is up a creek without a paddle. It means you're in trouble or you're in a difficult situation. You're up a creek without a paddle. And these days, these days, we usually just use the short form of this idiom, um, which is up a creek. You're up a creek. I'm up a creek. Oh my God, I'm up a creek. I forgot to go to my class. I'm up a creek. Up a creek. Um, let me give you some examples. Jack was up a creek when he lost money at the casino. Oh my God. Jack was up a creek when he lost money at the casino because he had to pay his rent with that money. Hey, man. Um, I was up a creek when I lost my passport traveling in Europe. <gasps> oh, my God. Uh, you're going to be up a creek if you keep coming to work late, said the boss. 
up a creek. So here's my question to you. Do you know anyone who's up a creek? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Do you? Do you? Do you know anyone who's up a creek? Are you up a creek? To be in a pickle. That's right. Same thing. To be in a pickle. Um, be in a rock between um, between a rock and a hard place means I've got two decisions. I can either do this or this, and I can't decide which one. Up a creek. I'm up the creek when I forget to bring bread for my wife. That's right. If you're supposed to go shopping, you got to remember that. Otherwise, you'll be up a creek. My newbie was up a creek when she messed up the date for the meeting. Uh-oh. dum dee dum 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 dee dum 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 That's why I look at my calendar all the time. Because I keep forgetting, what do I have to do? What do I have to do? What do I have to do? Don't be up a creek. Toshi, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Thank you. I hope you are not up a creek today. What is the last time to be up a creek, Michael? Um, uh, when was I up a creek? Oh, um, I was up a creek about two weeks ago when I went to the grocery store and I didn't have a mask. And so I had to go back home and get a mask and go back to the grocery store. <sighs> How about you? When was the last time you guys were up a creek? Maybe not. Maybe you know somebody who was up a creek. Keep in mind, um, just for one second, um, I'll go here. Keep in mind that the reason that I always ask a question like this is because it's important for you to write your own example sentence when you're picking up this vocabulary. So, you know, my example sentence is here. Awesome. Um, of course they're awesome because I wrote them. But uh, they're not related to you. And so that's the, that's the problem. It's got to be related to you. So that's why you can write your own example. Um, Tammy, I used to keep a mask in the car all the time, but the, it's so hot outside that the band broke. And so that happened to me twice this summer. Otherwise, I always leave the mask in the car. I was up a creek when I lost my car's keys. Oh, my God. I don't bring money these days because of cash list. One day, I was going to sort of buy something, but it was only paid in cash. So I was up a creek. Good example. That's right. That's right. Up a creek. Up a creek. That's right. We're going into a into the cashless world. I was up a creek because I forgot to pay a bank loan. Ay ay ay. I was up a creek last week when I went to the supermarket and realized I left my wallet home. Ah! The cat is up the creek when he missed the mouse. Ah! Yikes. Up a creek. And again, this is a short form of the idiom, up a creek without a paddle. But we usually, these days, just use the short version. I'm up a creek. Ah. Don't come late, you'll be up a creek. Be up. Be up. All right. I was up a creek when I deleted message app by accident. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's really easy these days in the world of technology to be up a creek, right? You know, you forget your password or you accidentally delete something or your, your backup crashes. Um, I, I hope, I hope all of you have some kind of system to back up your phone or back up your files in your computer. There's so many ways to do that. There's a, there's a cloud, 
you know, you can you can get a an external external hard drive. You know, you you got to back up. Are you funny in real life or only on you? This is me. I'm this this is me all the time. I'm in a bind, correct. That's right, same thing. Same thing. Um, what you see is what you get. This is me. All right. Sometimes you see somebody. I was up a creek when I forgot to turn on the rice cooker. I've done that. I do that with the coffee machine sometimes. I... Um, I put the water in, I put the coffee in, and then I forget to turn it on. Or I put the coffee in, and I turn on the coffee maker, and I forget to put the water. That's, that's not really up a creek. That's like up a puddle. Small little trouble. All right, so when, you're sus when you see somebody and you're suspicious that that person is doing something wrong, or something bad, or if you have a bad feeling about somebody, you know, like when you come to New York City and you see some people on the subway, ah, right? You can say, I think he's up to something. I think he's up to something, okay? So to be up to something means you're doing something wrong, okay? And this is a set phrase. I think he's up to something. I think he's up to something. For example, Tommy had a feeling that Jack was up to something because Jack called him after midnight. Why are you calling me after midnight? What are you up to? Are you up to something? Um, why are you smiling like that? Are you up to something? So, uh, the thief is up to bank robbery. So, BB, this is a set phrase. This never changes. You can't say up to and then he's up to the party or he's up to robbing the bank. It's a set phrase. He's up to something. That guy is up to something. That girl is up to something. Um, there were a few teenagers on the train behaving strangely. I think they were up to something. I think they were up to something. How about you? If you saw somebody wearing a raincoat on a warm day, would you think that they were up to something? I think my boss is always up to something when it comes to making me work late. Nice example. Da -da -da -da. He's up to something. Can't trust that guy. He's untrustable. He's up to something. Yes. Um, BB, the, the, the idiom is a set phrase. Be up to something. You can't, you can't replace something with another word. It's just a set phrase. So, the thief is up to bank robbery. What's wrong with that is up to something is a set phrase. You cannot replace something with another word. That guy was up to stealing my wallet. We don't say. Up to something. Because it means I think I'm suspicious of the person. I think think the person is doing something wrong. I have a feeling the person is doing something bad. That's why. I hope that makes sense. Naoko said, I think my boss is always up to something when it comes to making me work late. She's suspicious of her boss. I'm always up to something. I'm always up to something thinking about something. Huh? I'm always up to something. I'm thinking about something, what I'm going to do. Right. Yes, I saw a strange guy with a strange bag and a mask going into the bank. I think he's up to something, for example. 
The TV station must be up to something when the famous anchor woman got laid off out of the blue. Correct. That's right. They're up to something. We can't trust them. So again, we use this phrase when you see somebody that you think is doing the wrong thing. I think she's up to something because she's laughing at the phone during work. That's a good example. All right, let me try it again. When, you're, when you think or have a feeling that somebody is doing something wrong, you look at that person, you can say, oh, that person is up to something. That person is up to something means I feel that person is doing something wrong or going to do something wrong. That's all. Don't think too deeply. And again, it's a set phrase. You can't replace the word something with another word. Up to something. So here's my question. If you saw someone wearing a raincoat on a warm, sunny day, let me make that a warm, sunny day, would you think that they were up to something. How about you? When I come back home late, I'm a little bit afraid there is someone up to something. Some guy was walking up the stairs quietly last night. I think he was up to something. Those are good examples. BB, look at everybody else's examples. That will help you. We learn from each other. We learn from each other. That's important. He's up to something. That guy is up to something. He must be up to something for sure. I think so. I'm with you on that. By the way, I'm not up to anything, but if you do want to get a copy of this document, just visit uh, here, myhappyenglish.com slash YouTube, and you can uh, download this document. It's free. Can you believe that? Free, 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 free. I saw a thief in front of the bank. He's up to something. Is it correct? Yes. Now you got it. He's up to something. What are you up to? All right. In a similar way, in a very similar way, when the kid is up to something because he's lying. Ha, ha, ha. That's right. Um, when someone has a bad habit or a bad behavior that they used to do, okay? So they used to, they used to smoke or they used to drink or they used to gamble, okay? Somebody you know had this bad habit. They used to drink too much alcohol. They used to, but then they stopped. But then you see them again, drinking again. You can say, ah, he's up to his old tricks. He is up to his old tricks. Okay. So to be up to your old tricks means you're doing something that you used to do and it's not something good like gambling or smoking. And now you do it again. So let's take a look. Jack stopped gambling a few years ago. Okay. Jack had a gambling problem. And he stopped gambling a few years ago. But now seems like his it seems like he is up to his old tricks. He's up to his old tricks means he is doing that bad thing again after he quit doing it. What does that mean about Jack? It means Jack started gambling again. So in the past, Jack had a gambling problem and then he stopped. But now, he is up to his old tricks. He's doing it again. He's up to his old tricks. He's doing that again. 
Oh my God. Mario has been to the bar every night this week. Seems like he's up to his old tricks again. Here too, up to his old tricks again means it is a set phrase. Okay? We don't substitute, don't change any words. He's up to his old tricks again. That's what we mean by an idiom. He picked up the bad habit again. Thank you. So Mario has been to the bar every night this week. Okay? He used to have a drinking problem, then he quit. Seems like he's up to his old tricks again. The boss is up to his old tricks again. He's been taking notes about what time everybody arrives in the office in the morning. Oh my God. He's doing that bad thing again. That terrible, crazy boss. Da, 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 da. My friend used to be a heavy drinker, but recently he is up to his old tricks again. That's right. And to be honest with you, we usually use this about some kind of bad uh, behavior. I'm up to my old tricks as I started slapping my wife again. Wow. Oh my God. Now we know why she won't kiss you. Once he or she gave it up, but now still doing it again. That's right. I don't want to be up to my old tricks, for instance, smoking and taking drugs. That's right. Up to my old tricks again. I don't have to worry about that because I haven't stopped drinking. <laughs> uh, I try to think positive way, but it seems like I'm old, up to my old tricks again. Can I say in this situation? Yes. Anytime you used to do something, you used to do it, and then you stopped, and then you're back at it. You know, I quit eating chocolate but I'm up to my old tricks again. That's not such a severe thing, but that's that works in that case too. Um, you're up to your old tricks again. How are we doing on time? How are we doing on pages? Oh my God, we still have more to go. Um, I quit wearing hold socks, but I'm up to my old tricks again. Good. Hello. Barathi Burn. Hello, welcome. Um, all right. In the interest of time, I'm going to go a little quickly uh, because we're running out of time. Oh, my God. In golf, par, the word par means the usual number of strokes to get the ball in the hole. Okay? So if you are at par, you're doing, you're, you're at the correct level, the correct number of strokes. So we say that something is up to par. To be up to par means something is at the correct or acceptable level. Um, I cut down drinking beers. I'm up to my old tricks again. Good for you. You are not going to be striking out. What does it mean? Strike out. Uh, strike out comes from baseball. When you strike out, it means you are not successful. So to strike out means to not be uh, successful. Yes, I know a lot of Arabic countries. I know many countries because my students come from many countries. All right. Up to par. Jack's gambling wasn't up to par tonight. It means he wasn't playing very well. It's not up to par. This morning when I was studying Japanese, my brain was not up to par because I forgot a lot of what I studied yesterday. So I had to review. <sighs> but that's okay. I'm up for it. Frank's work as a salesman. Sorry. Let's make that modern, shall we? Sa Frank's work as a salesperson wasn't up to par, so he was fired from his job. 
The food in this restaurant is usually very good, but tonight it's not really up to par. BB, sorry, I need to stay on the track for this lesson, okay? You can send me a DM if you want to know some those those answers. The political leader's performance is not up to par, not up to par, okay? Um, I hope this lesson is up to par for you. I hope this lesson is up to par. Um, anybody in your office, any of your coworkers, their work is not up to par? If you're a student, is your work, your schoolwork up to par? When you do your exams or you hand in your reports to the teacher, is it up to par? Hmm, 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 hmm. I hope so. Up to par. Up to par. We do have a lot of idioms um, uh, that um, uh, come from sports and English. This lesson is not up to par because you don't answer my question about if you know. I do not know. I know merhaba. That's hello. But I think that's Turkish. And there are a lot of, there are a lot of Arabic words in English. Uh, Arabic words that we use in English, but I can't think of any right now. Okay? If you're going to ask a question, BB, please keep it to the topic. Okay? Because this is a group lesson with everybody. Um, can I say subpar? Yes. Marabar is Arabic, not Turkish. Very good. I do know an Arabic word. Congratulations. Subpar, yes. Today I feel below par. Yeah, you can use that for your for your feeling, right? I'm a little bit below par today. I'm not up to par today. I'm not feeling well. Um, all right, let's 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 move ahead. Sorry to go quickly because uh, we, we're out of time. I thought we would go quicker. All right. Um, this happens uh, all the time with, with prices, right? When when prices rise up and fall or move in an irregular way, you can say it's up and down. It's up and down. If your work isn't up to par after the probationary period, you'll definitely get fired. All right. Um, that's for sure. So let's look at what be up and down is Jack was winning a little and then losing a little at the casino. He was up and down, up and down, winning a little bit, losing a little bit, losing a little bit, huh? Winning a little, losing a little, winning a little, losing a little. He's up and down. The price of gasoline these days is up and down. I know that in some places the price is just keeps going up and up and up and up and up. Bitcoin is always up and down, fluctuating, correct? Fluctuating is very formal word. That's why we say up and down. Life is up and down. That's right. Life is up and down. My weight has been up and down recently. I think I need a healthier lifestyle. Right. Okay. Life has ups and downs. Life, life is up and down. That's the adjective. Life has up and downs. Excitement. Excitement. That's right. Thank you, Toshi. Um, my feeling towards my wife is up and down. That's why I'm so happy. Okay, good. Um, up and down. All right. I think we have two more. I think, uh, I think Mia, you can relate to this one. When you are facing a different, difficult situation or a person who's a rival, you can say you are up against that situation or up against that person. At the casino, Jack was up against a really good poker player. Richie just got fired from his job. He's up against a tough job market these days. If we drive to Boston at 7 a.m., we're going to be up against a lot of heavy traffic. So there's a, a, a strong opponent or there's a tough situation. You can say, I'm up against that. Is your office in the Chrysler building? No, that's just a virtual picture. Um, life is a roller coaster. It's up and down. That's correct. That is correct. It's up and down. Up against. Up against. 
Um, okay. I'm up against my opponents who are out of my league. Good. It's an uphill battle. Correct. All right. Good. That's good. That's good. Um, all right. I think we got one more. Yes. Okay. My favorite idiom of the day. Think about this, right? The space or the distance from your feet to your eyeballs. It's a large percentage of your body, right? It's a lot. Okay? So we say, I'm up to my eyeballs in that. Up to my eyeballs in that. It means I have too much of that thing or too much to do. So... It seems Jack is up to his eyeballs in debt. Too much gambling, too many credit cards. Recently, I've been up to my eyeballs in work. Too much work to do. Okay? But we could use it like this. Recently, I've been up to my eyeballs. Sorry, Jenny is growing tomatoes in her garden, and she's a little too successful. She's up to her eyeballs in tomatoes. She has too many tomatoes. Up to her eyeballs. Up against means you are facing a negative situation. Weather the storm means to survive that. I was one of your first subscribers. You had 1,000 subs. John, thank you so much. Way, way back in... 2012, I think I started on you. Oh, 10 years on YouTube. Oh my God. It is overwhelming. All right. So let's take a moment and do a little review. I'm up to my neck. I'm up to my ears. Yes, we use all of those phrases. I've been up to my eyeballs learning English. I've been up to my eyeballs in work. Good. So when you're up to your eyeballs in something, it means you've got a lot of that thing to do. Um, when you're up against something, okay, um, it means, you know, you're facing a difficult situation. We'll, we're up against a lot of heavy traffic. We eyeballed one, one another, right? That we, we noticed each other. We eyeball each other. I've been up to my eyeballs and weeding the garden. I haven't been weeding the garden recently. All right, this is just a review. Up and down, up and down. The price of gas is up and down. It's fluctuating. Um, up to par. Frank's work as a salesperson wasn't up to par, so he was fired. Okay, below standard. Um, somebody who's up to their old tricks is doing their bad habit again. Okay, I'm up to my eyeballs in paperwork. Me too. Um... What else? Uh, somebody's up to something. Those teenagers on the train are behaving strangely. They are up to something. Possibly, I don't trust them. Jack was up a creek when he lost his money at the casino. He's in trouble, in a bad situation. Um, I'm down for going to the bar tonight. I am up for going to the bar tonight. means I want to do that. And are you up? I hope you're still up. I hope you didn't fall asleep during this class. All right, that, my friends, is it. That is all the time that we have for today's class. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you would like to download this, sorry, <laughs> get my finger there. If you'd like to download this document, just go to myhappyenglish.com slash YouTube. You can download that for free um, in a few minutes once I upload that. Don't forget, you can also take my vocabulary workshop, all right? You can feel better about your English by improving your vocabulary. All right, thank you so much for joining me today for today's live English lesson here on YouTube. Nine months of English lessons here for you. Thank you so much. I hope you guys have a great day. Have a wonderful evening, and uh, catch you later.